Well, we kick off this episode with an absolute banger. This upper 20 common come from Ashbury Fisheries, where we are for the next 48 hours with Ash Bradbury himself. Absolutely lovely fella and a super dangerous angler. So um, yeah, we're looking forward to catching up with Ash, hearing about this new complex that he's taking on. And um, as I say, also picking his brains as to how about, oh sorry, how he goes about his business. But look at that for a start. Mega chuff with that one. We got here last night. We actually planned not to fish. We turned down a couple of opportunities yesterday afternoon, prime opportunities for a bite. But we thought, no, we'll just give them a bit of a feed and wait until today. However, I did put one rod out last night. Um, there's a good reason for that though, because it took a little bit of disturbance to get it out. But you'll see that in more detail a bit later on when I get it back out. But for now, I'm gonna have a couple of picks with this awesome old common get it back, then we'll go and catch up with Ash. And we've got some hunting to do because we're setting ourselves a bit of a, a crazy target of 10 fish between us and a 30 pounder each, which is a tall order, but we've got mega weather for it. It's a perfect time of year. So no excuses really. We've just got to put the work in. Right, this is the spot where I just caught that fish from. I'm fishing it washing line style, so I'm casting my lead across to this bank, putting my rig in, dropping it onto the spot and then clipping it to this pole here. So the line is going tight from the pole, across to the rod, completely out of the water and out of harm's way. Um, a really fantastic edge for anywhere that you can you know, employ this sort of tactic because the fish don't get to see or feel the line. Now, there's a massive spot out here very big and blatant area, clearly getting polished off on a regular basis. Um, now when I put my rig in last night, it was dark and I'd done it by torchlight, and there's actually some weed just this side of the spot, um, a line of weed. So rather than just put the bag straight in the middle of the spot, I've dropped it right next to the weed and just pulled it into the edge of the weed, and then had the line coming down over the weed and onto the clip. So basically it was tucked right in on the edge um, so it's a lot less blatant and the interesting thing is I've just come around here to top this spot up however it seems like there's still a lot of bait there and to me that shows the power of the positioning of the hook bait and also the solid bag you know that small little pile of attraction if they just can't ignore it you know it, it, it just pulls them to that um, and a little balanced hook bait in amongst it it's lethal so to be honest with you, I don't even think I'm going to put any more bait out. I'm just going to have a little closer look, Try not to stand on these swan mussels here. There's so many of them. Do you know what, actually, interesting fact for you, I only just found this out this week, one large swan mussel can filter 50 litres of water in one day, which is obscene, isn't it? So, yeah, there's hundreds of them around here. Uh, so, yeah, they're doing a great job for the lake. It's clear that summer's been eaten. And in fact, I can actually see the remainder of the bag just on the edge of the weed here. So again, it didn't even get the whole bag in its mouth. I've talked about it so many times, but that small balanced light bait just shoots up really easily. Um, if you've got a super sharp hook on there and a short hook link, they just can't deal with it. <laughs> Nailed. I'm going to put a little bit more out anyway, just because um, it looks like Looks like a lot of the hemp's gone. There's still a fair bit of sweet corn there, but it looks like they've mostly eaten the pellet and the hemp, so the smaller items. There's still a few 10 mils about. But this stuff's got loads of juice in it as well, so it'll add a nice bit of fresh attraction to the area. It's just mainline hemp, some sweet corn, got some sticky baits, bloodworm pellets in there. A um, little bit of smart liquid and some 10 mil cell. Lovely jubbly. Right, I'm not going to go over the top because they don't need it. I think we'll go and see Ash, see how he's getting on. And also there's a little spot next door to Ash that I baited up yesterday. So I might take a couple of rods around there 
Because like I say, we've put the pressure on ourselves with this big target, so we've got to make the most of every moment. Right, we're on the far bank and it looks bang on. Um, Ash has been seeing fish coming up and down this margin. He's actually just moved one into the swim next door. But this is the swim that I trickled a little bit of bait into yesterday. And in actual fact, the fish were in here ripping it up before I'd even put bait out there. So there must be some natural food that they uh, obviously taken a fair interest in. In fact, when I did put some bait in, <laughs> I chucked two handfuls in and then noticed there was a small one just literally sat sort of a rod length out. Um, and he was still happy, even though I just chucked that bait over his head. So I got a single bit of corn and chucked it in front of it and it landed about six inches in front of this fish. And he just swam up, took it, and then I thought, I'll try it again, second one. That time it was a bit like, hang on, mate, what's going on here? Like, this is too good to be true. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he, he swam off. So sun's out now, it's hitting this margin. There's a wind trickling in here really is prime, prime conditions to nick one. I've got two solid bags ready to go. I've not even filled them up, literally just sort of two thirds or, yeah, about two thirds full on a, on a smaller size one. So just enough to keep that hook bait nice and safe. Um, there's a bit of weed in the edge here, so I'm gonna be dropping it into a bit of silk weed and that. So that'll be presented perfectly with a little hook bait inside. Um, I mentioned before that when I load my bags, I put the hook through the bag when I'm starting off. And someone once commented, or someone last commented on the YouTube video, good luck leaving the hook outside the bag, mate. Well, I think what I failed to mention was that before casting out, I'll just tuck the tip back into the bag so it's completely um, secure and it's not gonna get caught up on anything. You know, potentially if it was sticking outside the bag, it could hook up on a bit of weed as it was landing, but yeah, perfectly safe inside there. Lovely little parcel, just right for a bite. Let's try and catch one. Right, I've got one rod in place, straight out, and shortly after I put it out, a fish came through from the right-hand side. So I'm gonna put this one out to the right-hand side. Um, the light's not that great, but I could see that there was still some bait there from yesterday. Obviously not the best sign, but it's still fairly early in the morning and we didn't expect them to get up here till sort of mid midday or sort of afternoon. So plenty of time for them to get their heads down, but I think it's more important that we got here maybe before they did, and then we're not spooking them. So we get the rigs in place. Hopefully they're gonna arrive and they're gonna have a little party. So we were just uh, watching the fish in the swim, swim up from my main swim, watching them coming in and out the edge and uh, my washing line rod has just dropped back. And we're playing a little, I think, it, well, I don't know, it might, it might be quite good. Ooh. How few goes the fish? I think it's one that does about 28 pound. It's quite cool though. Yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a nice one. Well. He's nice. Twenty-nine four. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good weight for it. Twenty-nine four. Twenty-nine four. Lovely. Trio. One of the old girls. One I've not had before, so I'm very, very happy. First one on double little corns on a German rig. So we just had that lovely 29 pound mirror on the washing line out the corner. I'm just gonna get another rig tied and get it back out there for the afternoon. 
and then uh, I might be moving up halfway up the lake and uh, fish a couple of spots that I primed there as well, ready, ready for this evening. We had a little plan this morning to catch one out of this corner and then move and uh, we've had a lovely 29 pounder so we can't complain. Two, two towards the 10 that Joe wants to do. Just a little bit shy of 30 pound, but that doesn't matter because it's a lovely fish and I've not caught it before. What's even better is my first fish on the little corns on a little German rig, flavoured up with sea monster. Well, I had a little mooch and in this corner found quite a few fish and quite a bit of clouding as well. So nipped back, grabbed my git. Git, so a combination of gear and kit. <laughs> and uh, popped up here, flicked a couple of bags out. Didn't get the best drops. I think there's quite a bit of weed in this corner. Um, and I do remember when I fished this corner in the past, they were really tricky to catch up here for some reason. I tried everything one day and ended up just pulling my hair out and not getting a bite in the end. I think I'd probably be better off with some short zigs because it looks to be about five, yeah, four or five foot deep in this corner. There's quite a big shallow ledge before it drops off. But there's even been the odd couple scoot past me close in. So I'm feeling it a little bit from having a, uh, an early start and not eating enough today. I think what I'm going to do pop back round to my swim, get some food inside me, have a coffee and maybe tie up a couple of zigs and pop back round here with them. Because at the moment, I don't know, I'm just not really feeling this, the old bags. And to be honest with you, the left hand one did drop a bit better, so it, it could be all right. You know what it's like, sometimes you just talk yourself out of it, but could quite easily go. Maybe I'll just give it another 10 minutes. <laughs> well, I'm on the move again. We've just seen uh, a few fish shown further down the lake towards the middle section of the lake and I've baited a few spots this morning and it looks like there's a couple of fish there. The fish have generally, since I caught um, the one this morning, about, about midday wasn't it I think, um, the fish have moved out of the area. They've ended up the far end of the lake but I'm hoping that they'll come back at some point this evening or tomorrow morning and uh, we'll make a bite from there. Well, there was a few fish in that corner, and to be honest with you, one of the options is to go back around there with some floaters, but I needed a feed, and the day's dragging on a little bit now. So I've got spots out here that have been baited up and not fished all day long, so I'm pretty sure there's a good chance fish have been visiting them. This particular one is going on the tree line. That one, they've definitely been in there eating that bait. There's probably only a quarter of what I put out last night. So I'm just gonna put this little bag out there and then we're gonna do the bay rod again, cast that over into the trees, drop that, clip it up and uh, yeah, get some food down me and relax a little bit. Cause like I say, it's been a busy day. But first of all, I've got to get this as tight as I can to this canopy. So wish me luck.
Well, today's forecast, sponsored by Carp Angle, is drismal, but carpy. Um, it was another quiet night, to be honest with you. I woke up at uh, four o'clock to a liner on the middle rod. I think there's a trailer that's been swimming around because uh, yeah, line tightened right up and I struck into nothing. Nash has had a bit of that as well. Um, yeah, then went back to sleep, woke up with a horrendous headache, which I went to bed with, um, had a little lay in and woke up to a bite off the left hand margin. Had a little scrap and got a nice common in the bag, probably around about the 20 pound mark, I reckon. Uh, it's been drizzling the last hour or so. Just waiting for it to clear up a little bit and then I'll get Mike round and uh, yeah, we'll show you him. But as I said, the weather's bang on. I woke up this morning thinking, what on earth were you thinking? 10 fish, that is just absolutely ridiculous, Joe. Um, but you never know, you've got to try these things sometimes. We've still got 24 hours. Ash has had to pop off to um, pick his kids up and drop them off at school. He'll be back in another hour or so. Um, and like I say, we've got banging conditions. It's just a case of making them count. Lots of options, lots of swims free. Um, yeah, let's do this. Well, this is an angry male. The spawning tubercles are starting to appear and the old giveaway, jeez on me hand. <laughs> um, I changed a little, something little this morning just because yesterday when we were watching these fish, it was definitely apparent that they were looking for lines. You know, if they, it seemed like if they saw bait in the edge, they'd circle it looking for lines before they'd drop down on it. And then they're actually avoiding that area once they realised that there were lines in there. Um, so what I've done is I've changed to running leads and slackened them right off so that the fluorocarbon's down on the bottom as much as possible. And what you find with fluorocarbon is if it's in mid water, it's actually not that invisible, but when it's up against stuff, it really does blend in. So yeah, that might have helped, but obviously mostly the fantastic conditions are probably making the biggest difference of all. I've just got that rod back out there. Fingers crossed for another one. Happy days. So I've just got back from uh, dropping the kids off. Children, that is. And uh, yeah, because I had to wind in this morning, nip home, take the kids to school. And hopefully I'm not back too late to, to get a bite. We've seen fish show out in the area this morning, so we'll get the rod back out there and see what happens. Well, its conditions have been so mega all morning, it really did feel like it was going to just be a matter of time. Um, I've changed up the tactics a little bit. I had two rods over a bit of bait last night. Nothing seemed to be going on out there this morning. Um, and then I've just literally about 20 minutes ago, changed one over to a zig, a short zig. And I was actually going to move the middle rod or put that on the middle rod, should I say, which was a single IB cast over to where I saw some bubbling this morning. But I thought, no, I won't. I'll put the zig on the right hand rod. And I'm very glad I made that choice because it was the middle rod that's gone with the single IB on. And we've got a cracking mirror here. It's not a, a bit big one, but it's a lovely fish. It's got some really cool scales on it. Come on, girl. Oh, that's a really cool one. I'm guessing this is one of Ash's stockies. Maybe a VS one by the looks of it, but could be wrong. Come on, girl, get in that net, please. We need you, <laughs> we desperately need you. <laughs> yes, yes. That is a mega cool carp, that one. And a massive result, because that is number four. And I'm sure Ash is gonna get one or two today. But look at this weather, C-A-F beyond belief. Awesome. Result.
Well, we've spoke to Ash. Well, he's here right next to the camera, but <laughs> he's confirmed this is a Simo strain cup. And what a banger. Real character, this one. Some lovely, unique scaling. It's got a bit of a, a line scar on this side, um, but it's, it's kind of already healed up and it's going to become part of its character by the looks of it. But yeah, cracking, cracking little carp. Um, it's, there's a few mixed ones in here. So yeah, Ash has taken the time to go down and hand pick all of these fish from a few different fish farms, uh, VS Fisheries, Simo and Mike Wilmots, I believe. Is that right? Yeah, Mike Wilmots. Pure pedigree carp with uh, a massive amount of potential for the future to go on top of the already amazing stock that's in this lake. So yeah, fantastic future for this place, that's for sure. Right then, mate, we're gonna get you back and hopefully we're gonna catch one of your 30 pounder friends. So send a few this way, if you don't mind. Well, that is an absolutely mega little creature and Ash has kindly allowed us to name it. So, we're calling him Yeehaw. <laughs> Very apt. So this, this is off the spot. We see a few fish shine yesterday and I was gonna put a zig out there because we were seeing them up in the water. And uh, I, I thought oh, I'll just put a lead out there to see. Oh, it's going. And it went down with a real shallow drop. And I just pulled it back a little bit and it like literally fell off the shelf into deep water. And I thought, oh, if ever there's a big fish spot, that's the one. This is probably a stocky but put quite a bit of bait on it, to be fair. Sort of or bust, really. And uh, when I put the rod out, it went out first time yesterday. And then I, I took the kids to school, so I had to wind in this morning, took the kids to school, come back, get first cast straight back on the money. And my real handle went straight in the right position for first attempt. I said to Joe, that's gonna go. And here we are. We're playing a nice, oh, here's a nice one. Another one on the, that's actually the first one on the double large corns on a Ronnie. Oh, I know what one it is. It's, is it petals? It's petals. Yes. Oh, that's mega. I put that fish in here in 2015. That's crazy. Went in about three pound. One of your babies. It's petals. Wow, oh mate, what an awesome carp. Great to be back out on the bank. It's been, it feels like it's been a, a long winter and spring's been a long time coming, that is for sure. We're, you know, well overdue. And this morning, I have to say, when, uh, when I wound my rods in to go and take the kids to school, I didn't want to be winding them in, especially when I walked up to Joe swim and he had one in the net. So, um, but yeah, done the job, got back, got a rod out on the spot, first cast, and it's gone. And I've got a mega carp to show you. Yeah. Good to be back out in the bank. The weather's come good, really good today. We've got an easterly wind, which normally you'd say is bad, but where I'm fishing, it's definitely pulled the fish back down our way because a lot of the fish had moved up the far end yesterday. And yeah, they're moving back down here. I've just had a liner as well after having the other one. So I reckon there's more to come. Look at that. Fish known as petals, part of the Mears future. This fish I actually grew on in a tank at Tails Up. 
from three or four inches long to around three pound and now it's 18 pound eight so it's 15 and a half pound what a fish it is lovely to see it again first time I've seen it on the bank since we took over and I said one day I'd love to come back and catch one of the fish that went in that we grew on for Ben here's one of them imagine this if it gets even bigger if it doesn't it doesn't matter really does it look at it what a fish dark as your hat lovely pearly scales angry angry male thank you very much go make someone else happy Now we've planned this trip to Ashbury Fisheries for a little while now and Ash had hinted towards the fact that he had something a little bit special to show us and indeed I have to agree because as soon as I arrived here he got them out and uh, yeah amazing little product this Ash. Um, so tell us a little bit about it, why you've come up with it and why it's so effective. Well, basically we have a plastic ban on the lakes here as quite a few lakes now are bringing in or introducing the plastic plastic like hook bait ban on many lakes and about five years ago I came up with the idea to actually make imitation corns out of pop-up mixes. Um, I managed to basically find a way of doing it. Um, unfortunately one thing led to another, a, a few problems and, and whatnot, it got shelved and then last year due to Covid, um, the lockdown, originally I was contemplating selling tails up and then when it came to it I just I couldn't do it so and there was one thing in the back of my mind I had this product and I thought I've got to give it a go and here we are another sort of six months down the line we've got a finished product um, we've got the name it's all trademark registered and yeah the uh, imitation corn hook baits are sort of born Awesome. Well, obviously, like you mentioned, there's a lot of waters that are banned in plastic now. And we talked about it earlier. One brilliant example, I was fishing a lake called a match bit many years ago and hooked a trailer. When I got it in, basically the hook was completely rusted. It had been in there mm. for so long. It had no point on it. But this fish had picked up the bit of yellow corn, rubber corn that was still on there. Still on there the yeah. lead had mussels on it. Yeah. And so that's how long it had been in there. And that rig is just fishing all the time. And so it's just kind of increasing the chances of fish getting tethered on rigs that have been cracked off. And it really is. That's pretty much what we've done. We've done it for safety reasons for the fish and for wildlife as well. Because if you do get cut off, or if you crack off or pike bites you off, your rig's sitting out there live <laughs> for as long as it's there, isn't it? Until something does eventually pick it up, basically. So, yeah, it's, this is, you know, these break down over a period of time, um, much the same as a pop-up does. So if you, if you do have an unfortunate set of circumstances where you crack off, you know, you, your rig's not gonna be live indefinitely. And I mean, it's not very easy to get me to try new things, but as soon as I saw these, I thought, well, I've got to give them a go. And I had actually stopped in on the way here at a cash converter's base to get big tins of corn, but unfortunately my card had run out. So I ended up bringing 12 tins of corn, not even knowing that you had this stuff. When you text me saying, oh, I'll bring plenty of corn, I, I sort of chuckled to myself because I thought you're going to love exactly what we've got for you. You know, and we've actually, we've designed two different sizes. So we've got what we call the little corns, and they're perfect for a single, you know, um, PVA bag sort of hook bait, or you can use two little ones on a German rig and they sit lovely, they sit cocked off the hook. Um, and then you've got the big corns, which that was one of the things I, was, I really wanted when we first started designing these, and it took us a long time to get two of them to pop a Ronnie up and it stay up for days. So a Ronnie or a Choddy or a Hinge Diffie? Yeah, this session I've used them on Choddies, I've used them on the Ronnies and they've been absolutely brilliant. So. There you go. Obviously I stuck one out the first night. I normally use like an eight mil pop-up with my solid bag rig, mm. but as I said, you know, I had lots of corn in the mix, so it just made sense to try one of them. And that buoyancy is perfect for me for a size four wide gate hook. It's yeah. just kind of wanting to lift the hook 
point up a little bit, you know, it's just a tiny little bit of buoyancy so that when they mouth it, it comes up easily. Um, now you've made these in a plain blank flavour, if you like, haven't you? That's it. Um, it literally, we haven't put any flavouring at all to them. Um, they've got sweeteners and, and a couple of other little bits to give them some inherent attraction. But the whole purpose, again, is we're opening it up to anyone using any bait from any company, you can flavour them to your own spe specification. So whatever flavour you want to chuck in, if you want to use a bit of goo, yeah. um, I yeah. understand that there's a kind of recommended amount though because of the yeah with the buoyancy. with the small ones um, you can do whatever you want really with them, um, but the large ones so that they keep their buoyancy, I recommend one mil of basically neat flavour. So you can put if you've got your own like favorite flavors you can put like a combination of flavors to make five mil and a little bit of sweetener blend them all together and then you know use a syringe to put one mil on top of a, a whole tub and you get 20 hook baits of large ones in each tub we're actually going to sell these in in tubs and also packets and the packets will be slightly cheaper like a refill type yeah thing. so you, you 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 can buy your tubs if you want to buy your tubs um you know your little pots to start with and then yeah buy buy your re refill packets after that awesome mate really good thinking and it's, it's you know you've obviously done a seriously good job because they look absolutely identical to a bit of sweet corn well we did when we uh we opened a tin up and we picked what you would pick for your hook bait and then we just molded it to that that shape basically you know we, we cut them and and then yeah got them designed to our our own specification. Mega. All right, mate, well, I can see more and more venues banning plastic as the years go by, so these are going to be an extremely popular little product. They're an edge, that's for sure. Well, we've just had a two-hour rain shower, which has enabled us to fill our bellies up with a nice bit of grub. And just as the rain was starting to die off, I noticed two or three patches of bubbles exactly in the vicinity that I baited up um, the day before yesterday when we arrived. I didn't put a huge amount on there, about five spoms, but quite a lot of little bits and pieces, hemp and pellets and sweet corn. Anyway, I've seen no activity over that the whole time, but as soon as I saw that they were fizzing up on it, I reeled a rod straight in and uh, flicked a, an IB about 10 yards past it and then just wound it back and dropped it on the spot stealthily, you know. Oh, it feels a bit funny. Uh, uh. And yeah, literally, I think, what do you reckon, 10 minutes? <laughs> 10 minutes and it was absolutely ripping. And it feels like a good fish as well. Unorthodox, isn't it? This is an absolute cracker. There's some stunning commons in this lake. Lots of 30 pounders as well. Um, even a 40 pounder. Oops. Called Not Cash, which we keep talking about and keep trying to talk it onto the bank, which hasn't been out for quite a long time now. It should be around 42 pound mark. Obviously, this one's not around the 42 pound mark. I reckon he's somewhere around the 20 pound mark. But look at that for a cool character. Lots of sort of mishmash scales, lovely dark blue colour, really long, bit of a kind of paintbrush tail. Yeah, well happy with him. And what can we say? Ash, when I um, done the intro and said about 10 fish afterwards, he's like, I thought you were only joking. <laughs> You're mad. Um, but, you know, the way we're going, we've got a chance of it. Nothing's certain, that's for sure. This is actually a tricky lake. You know, there's about 100 carp in here, so to try and catch 10% of them in 48 hours is a ridiculously tall order. Um, but we're on our way there, aren't we? So, yeah, this will be uh, number six. And the way the conditions are, for every chance of another one soon.
Another absolute character, this one. 24 and a half pound, super recognizable by the two scars on either side. Another mega long common, pretty wide as well. Ash hasn't actually seen this one before. So you can imagine it's pretty exciting for him having a fishery for how long? 19 months now and still the odd fish is popping up that he doesn't know so uh, yeah exciting times for Asprey fisheries and uh, exciting times for Joey who's having a wicked session I think there's a very good chance that we could pass this but you just never know three more fish to go and we're just coming into the evening now still got a night and a morning ahead of us let's hope old uh, not cash comes along or, or one of them other big ones i'm sure there's a good chance ash is going to snare a big one and uh, hopefully mike will too mega right let's get this one back and probably time to uh, think about having something to eat i reckon lovely times <sighs> cheers mate Another beautiful one, another male. We seem to be up the end with the males at the moment. This is our, I think it's our eighth now, Joe, isn't it? It uh, is, mate. 80% of the way there, eh? Two more to go. We've only got a couple of hours left, but what a fish this is, even if we don't catch any more. That's another new one, never seen before. So, come on, two more bites. Well, mate, I've got to say, seriously impressed with um, what you've done to the place. I think it's been five, six years since I've been here. Um, it's looking really cool. So tell us a little bit about it then. What, what made you want to sort of take on a fishery in the first place? I think ever since childhood, really. Um, you know, from my early teenage years, I was like, oh, imagine having a lake of your own and, and uh, being able to put your own imprint onto it. And yeah, here, here I am pretty much 30 years later in that fortunate position. Um, it's not just me, there's, there's two other gentlemen involved and, and they've helped us, you know, we've worked as a team uh, um, to get where we've got in the last sort of 18 months or so. And yes, it's absolutely amazing how, how it's sort of all come together in such a short period of time. And it is a short period of time, you know, we're not talking years and years, it's literally 18 months of graft and we've got it somewhere where, where we want it to be, you know, and, and the fish are doing so well already and uh, yeah, long may it continue. So had you fished here before? I fished here over 10 years ago, 2010. I uh, caught Hendrix in 2010, and then I went up to the top lake 2011, and fortunate to catch keys is quite quickly. Come on in. Yep, that's yes, a bite. We're awake. <laughs> Go on. Go on. Woohoo. <laughs> this is not good. This is really not good. Oh, it's turning. Oh no. Okay. Come on. Oh no! You fing shit! Bastard prick! Devastation. Oh, mate. That felt different to the others, like. Right, let's get it back out there. Come on, fuck. Oh, mate. Different. 
Oh, mate, how? Are you serious? Did you see the one show behind it while I was playing it? Did you get that on camera? Because that would look bloody epic. Right, we've still got an hour. Come on, Ash. We've got this, we've got this, come on. <laughs> well, mate, as anglers, it's nothing worse than losing one. But even worse, we only had two more fish to oh, go. We could have done it, Ash. Don't. <laughs> Highs and lows of carp fishing, isn't it? Reality, isn't it? You know, we're so close. We're so, we've got that ninth bite, effectively. I got done just before it as well. There you go, it is what it is, isn't it? Unlucky, mate. Okay, so we touched on the fact that you fished both of the lakes years ago. You obviously um, had a bit of a passion for the place, so obviously when it popped up that it was for sale, you were straight in there, yeah? Yeah, but I, right place, right time. Ben mentioned that he was looking to sell up. Um, I'd mentioned a few years previously, if you ever wanted to sell, let me know and, and uh, yeah, sort of the rest is history really, that first conversation and it was done, it was, you know, um, six months later we took over. Wicked. Now, what amazes me about the place, I mean, every lake does it really, but because I'd seen this when it had no trees around it or very little trees, tiny little shrubs, to see it now, it's amazing how quickly they mature, isn't it? Yes, yeah, the lakes were about 30 years old and um, it, yeah, they've matured beautifully in the last 10, 15 years really and yeah, it's special, it's, it is very special down here now. Okay, so the mere size, stock, the, it's, it's a really cool layout, we'll come to that in a second, but yeah, size and stock? Roughly nine acres and we've got definitely around 95 confirmed different fish now. And then there's, we think, in the region of 10 to 20 more fish that aren't really accounted for. I mean, I've had three fish this session that I've not caught before, um, and definitely one of them I've not seen. You've had a fish I've not seen before. So, yeah, yeah, it's really good. Awesome. I mean, 20, 30s, that's a big head of big fish, isn't it? Yeah, roughly 20, 20 I think we're on 23, 24, 30s for the right time of year. Um, and there's a few coming through as well. And 10 of those are the guts of 38 pound plus as well. So Lots of potential. Um, now, the obviously, well, not obviously, but the setup you've gone for is a slightly different kind of approach. You've taken on this kind of semi syndicate semi-exclusive hire. Indeed, right? yeah, when we took over, because of the investment we had to make, we had to make some changes. Um, I wanted to keep some form of syndicate going. It, originally, it was just gonna be a winter syndicate, uh, but when I actually looked at it, I thought, do you know what? It'd be nice to have a syndicate throughout the year and have a smaller syndicate that can fish it when it's not booked. And the first year, because we didn't really know how it was gonna go, I didn't wanna try and book it out fully. Also, I want less pressure on the lake. So when, uh, obviously when the exclusives are here, up to eight, eight anglers on the mere, you know, that's quite a lot of pressure for the fish, three, four days a week, you know, each session, because we run it like centre parks, Monday to Friday, Friday to Monday, you can book it, or you can book it for a full week, and then that counts as two sessions. Um, so we only book 30 sessions a year on each lake, and yeah, it works really well. You know, we do, we leave one weekend for the members each month on each lake, and at least one midweek as well. So they get a little bit of fishing during the summer months and then come November, we don't really book many sessions at all. November through to March, we don't book, book hardly any. We book like three or four sessions on each lake during that time. Oh, so yeah. you get, the members get real good value for money at that time of year. Yeah, so. well, I mean, what an amazing place to come with a, a group of mates and, and book oh, yourself. As far as, um, you know, socials are concerned, there's lots of swims that, you know, you, well, we've got these shelters here, which yeah. almost feels like you're on holiday in France in some ways. But yeah. more importantly, what I love about it is the fact that every swim has got a lot of options. Yeah. And, and one of the key things that I can't tend to try and do with I'm fishing somewhere for a few days is bait up multiple spots. Yeah. You know, and it kind of worked here, didn't it? I had about five spots of baited the first night, but it wasn't sort of till 24 hours or 36 hours afterwards that they started to show in those spots. And um, yeah, having multiple options, you've got different swims that are close to each other, so you can split your rods up. Obviously, we know they're quite shy on line, so that can be massively beneficial as well, can't yeah. it? But it's just a really interesting place to fish because you've got untold amounts of features and your own nice, cosy bit of water, haven't you, where yeah. no one can disturb you. That's the way we tried to peg it. That's why I say we, we did have originally 10 anglers could book it and then I brought it down, down to eight anglers this year. So it gives you a little bit more space. It also gives you the chance to move around if you, if you wish. 
um, and it, it works really well. I mean, the exclusives turn up and they're like, oh, what, you know, they're, they're worried about what swim they're going to get. I'm like, don't worry because every swim you'll have opportunities in, as we've had this week. You know, everyone's caught fish. They clearly so, get pushed around with yeah. a bit of pressure, don't they? And there's it actually not helps to have people down the other end of the lake to bounce them back towards you, you know? Definitely. So. And it's not just one big group of fish, is it? You know, like you said, the other day you came and had a good look around and you found fish all over the whole lake. So. Yeah. yeah, if you see baby tango, you know you're on the pack. So but, there's one main pack and then yeah, you the, have a bit Yeah, of... the fish are very, very spread at the moment, so. Awesome. All right, well, I imagine you're pretty fully booked anyway, but. Yeah, the top lake's fully booked for the year. This we've got a couple of weekends left if I want on the mere, but I'm not, you know, if we take them. We're, we're now booking for 2022, so really awesome. Yeah, yeah, we book a year ahead, so basically, as the exclusive turns up, say this weekend, they get first dibs on that weekend for the following year. If they don't take that, then it goes open to anyone to book. Mega. So. Well, I'll be honest with you, mate. I've got quite a few mates who I don't get out with a lot and this will be the perfect place to come with them so we'll have to have a chat about um, working sure. something out for 2022. Definitely. Well mate, that's the end of a very thoroughly enjoyable session. Absolutely unbelievable. L lived up to, well, your expectations. <laughs> <laughs> Scared you a little bit with that, didn't I? Ten fish, Ash, <laughs> £30 a reach. Yeah, you, you uh, jumped the gun on that one on me because I, yeah. I, th I thought we were, you know, 30 pounder each, and no, you went for 10 fish <laughs> in 48 hours, yeah. Well, we didn't quite do it, but we came close. Um, 29 each, eight fish between us. Unbelievable. So, yeah, re happy. really enjoyable session. Some mega carp, I mean, the real characters, aren't they? That's one thing I love about carp fishing, like lakes that have got different looking fish in them, you know, they're all kind of got their own characteristics, and uh, yeah, there's a nice mix of strengths in there. So. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. Well, we look forward to coming back again in the future. Um, but yeah, we should probably wrap it up there, shouldn't we? Welcome anytime. However, <laughs> oh, we're not going to wrap it up there because Mike has just had an absolutely obscene result with his last rod on the ground, everything else packed up. So let's go and take a look at one extremely special creature. Well, that's not bad for a last minute bite, is it? I was packing all my gear away. I honestly thought that that was the end of the session. We do a little bit more rain, so I thought, let's get everything in the car, not get caught out by it. Bought my other two rods in, took this one off the alarm, and I just heard the clutch clicking. And it was a Ronnie that I flicked down to the side of the island, just a couple of pouches of boilies over the top. And what a result. One called Rainers. Ash informed me, and what was she, 34? 34 pound, mega colour, ridiculous scales on it. What a way to wrap it up, eh? Buzzing. No, I've been blessed to have lots of uh, magic fishing memories. Um, probably a lot of them have been documented already. So I'm going to tell you about one which well, I don't think I've ever told a story. Um, and it's not carp fishing related, it's actually barbel fishing related, which is another big passion of mine. But on the first day of the season, uh, it was a religion of mine. We'd always go barbel fishing on the first day of the season. And, and quite a lot of the time I go with a very old fishing friend of mine, John, who actually started me fishing when we were 11. And on this particular season, um, we found some really big barbel feeding and uh, it was actually him that caught it. We both put rigs next to each other and we'd seen this fish from this limb underneath the tree, a, you know, a really giant one. And uh, we let him feed for a while, and, but neither of us could wait to get back and drop a rig in. Both dropped a rig in. Within five minutes, his rod had hooked round and he hooked what well, I think is the Lee record barbel. It wasn't at the time, it was spawned out, but it was 14 pound something, summer weight. 
and we're going back probably 15 years now so we're talking a very very big barbell and uh, it was an amazing moment both of us ended up jumping up and down and hugging on the bank um, I don't think we'd had much sleep because we've been up all night but yeah uh, a really amazing fishing memory one that I don't think uh, I don't think I'll ever forget Rig adaption. Now the chod, everyone's caught fish on chod, haven't they? Except Uncle Liam, because I kept losing them. So I, I took the chod, the most reliable hook I've ever used is a long shank. Of any, of any companies, any varieties, it's always been a long shank. So I took the chod, I made a little stiff boom, you know, your little hook link section, with a long shank, they look really cool, because the hook sticks out so much further than the bait. I thought that is gonna be brilliant. Started using that with the, really, the, the, the venue I was on, lent itself to a soft boom, so now we've got eight or nine inches of soft but heavy boom and my little chod section with a long shank. I nicknamed it the flick rig because when I started using this rig, wherever I seemed to flick it, I'd get a bite, but better fish. Now, I've always been known for day ticket angling, catching lots of doubles, twenties, numbers, bigots of fish. I can do that. Nowadays, anyone can do it. There's so many blooming fish around. But when I started using this adaption, let me just turn that off. This adaption of a chod with a long shank, um, I started getting on average bigger fish. So again, the flick rig. Mates of mine were laughing at me. People at the shows and the, the open days, I done in shops would, what the hell is that? It looks so obscene with this big long shank. It literally sticks out right up past the bait. But isn't that one of the best parts of it? They're not coming down, a, a big fish drops on a bait. He doesn't swim along the bottom on his side like that, thinking there's a long shank there, not a chod hook. He's coming in and dropping on it. And if you, if you set that up correctly and then touch the back of that hook with a pen or something, it rotors unbelievably. It's so, that was so reliable in my angling. I still use it now occasionally, but the Ronnie was involved then, wasn't it? And that's become my, my almost go-to. But the flick rig, if you're on a venue, you want to sort out the bigger fish, it's about two inches off the bottom, about another inch of hook to be fair. And, um, you know, proof's in the pudding. It catches a lot of big fish. A lot of my friends have gone on to use it. A lot of people message me they're using it and catching on average bigger fish now. So that was my adaption. It's nothing revolutionary. I haven't invented anything. I just made a little twist in the turn, adapted the rig to suit my angling. Works for me. Flick rig. Well, I gave it two nights in the pipes on Long Reach, but I don't know much actually in the swim bubbling but apparently there was bubbling going all over the lake the only fish I really saw apart from the one that did show um, within my water yeah we're all out the back and the last few sessions on there I keep seeing them in the back bit where it's out of bounds now we're not allowed around there and obviously it's pretty frustrating that and there's going to be half a dozen people there tonight so I imagine that you know that's going to push over the back even more um, but also, I've been baiting this swim, which is the one that I fished when I left, before I left, sorry, on the meadow. Um, obviously, I fished it Thursday night and Friday night last week, so I baited on the Thursday, and I baited on the Saturday, just before leaving, and then also baited it Tuesday when I arrived at the complex this week. So, it's had a good hit of bait every two days for uh, the best part of a week. And what I do know is that brown likes its grub. So it's been three weeks since it was last out. I think a fish like that, if you're in the right place at the right time, you can catch it at any time, you know, it likes its food. Aside from that one, there's loads of other big ones in here, well worth catching. So yeah, come around here. What I didn't show you last week was this little work of art, which is basically a living wind block. I've seen living fences before where they kind of bend over, cut it, but don't actually cut the wood right all the way through. Um, and then that carries on living. Well, what I've done is I've bent over these willows here, these young willows, because they're kind of getting in the way and they would have ended up just getting chopped down. And then I put a couple of posts in and then just tied them down with other like fresh branches, keeping it all natural, you know how it is. <laughs> um, and then Hopefully over the years, the willows will stay alive, they'll have other little branches come off of them and they'll be able to be threaded down and woven through and yeah, it will end up being a nice piece of work. But this is the start of it. I'm liking it. 
yeah, three rods out. It's all looking good. It's all about the evenings and the mornings on here. So we'll see if there's anything showing tonight. But I've got quite a good feeling, but I need to stop saying that. <laughs> Tap of the morning to you. Well, guess what? The old baiting paid off. Quiet night, but seven o'clock this morning, right hand rods pulled round. And it's this one swam towards me so quickly. I thought it'd come off to be honest with you. But look at that for an absolute peach. 34 and a quarter, oh sorry, 33 and a quarter. Awesome meadow mirror carp. We'll have a look at the other side as well. It's got a nice big single scale on this side, but yeah, buzzing with that one. Over the moon. Come on a uh, little link snowman. Over a scatter in a bait on an area that, as I said, has been pre-baited every two days for the last week. Mega. All right. Let's have a little look at his other side. Well, there we go, there's his other side. Lovely long carp. Got that really nice sheen on them. I think they, you know, normally only really have that when they don't get caught that much. Must be a protective slime. Mega carp. All right, let's get you back, mate. Thanks for your visit. I won't lie to you, my back is absolutely killing me. Too many nights on a bed chair, I reckon. Definitely need a good Thai massage. A couple of months in Thailand would be lovely right now. Right, one last little look at this super lovely cart before we get her back. Happy days. Let's get you back, lovely. Well, I was just doing a piece to camera about how very unlikely I was going to catch the brown because I just found out that it got caught last weekend out of the uh, big fjords. And although he likes his grub, as I was saying, and can get caught any time, I think it's quite unlikely to catch him this quickly. However, next week there's a full moon. And an even bigger however, he's only gone and caught another one. Got a lovely stunning linear here. Let's have a little quick way. 28, 28, just over 28. We'll call it 28. Check this beauty out. Whew. Wow, what a carp. That really is an absolute Stunner. Both sides. I think this side's the better side though. So we'll go with this one first. Look at him. Oi, oi, indeed. Wow. That is incredible. <laughs> Bit speechless to be honest with you. 28 pound of mega, mega meadows linear buzzing. Well, I'm obviously going to stay tonight. I'll tell you what, let's have a look at this other side. Yeah, obviously going to stay tonight. The spot is uh, rocking now. Going to keep, keep it topped up and there's no reason why we can't catch another one or two. Who knows what might happen. Got mega weather, lovely northwesterly blowing into this corner over to my right, so I'm tucked out of the worst of the wind. Um, but yeah, in a, in a great position on a pre baited spot. Yeah.
gained anything on this shit. All it's done is kited round on a massive long line, taking about 30 yards. So, oh, there's a boy out there, shit. I need to uh, oh, stop this before it gets in. Tell you what, heavy old fish this. Very heavy. The old lake of box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. Powerful as well. <whistles> Feels like an absolute donkey. Something special. Not as big as it felt, but have a nice car. Well, yesterday I was doing a bit of filming on my rods, and uh, one of them went. I thought, yes, I've got a bite. It was just by chance, purely by chance. I thought, yeah, I've got to fight in and everything. Well, it turns out the camera was on slow mo, so I only got it in slow mo with no sound. But today, this morning, I thought, right. Must be coming up towards bite time. I'm gonna get my camera set up so it's in a good position, just in case, and then I can flick it on, on the way to the rods. Well, I was just doing that, and it went <laughs> absolute madness. Just got pulled around for a while by this lovely, lovely chunk, which is 39 and a half pounds. <laughs> Absolutely over the moon. Look at that for a unit of a car. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Buzzing is not a good enough word. <sighs> made up. Absolutely made up. Right. I'm going to try and get a couple of snaps of this one. <sighs> you bloody ha. Go on, the Morgan. <sighs> Banger. Absolute banger. Wicked. Right, let's get you back, lovely. Yeah. Well, you know it must be chilly when the old teapot hat comes out. Could have a brew as it goes. Lovely jubbly. Oh. Bit cold. <laughs> well, buzzing with that one. Um, it's Saturday today. I've now done two nights on Long Beach and two nights on the meadow. I am going to go home today. I've got a, a cold in the post, first cold of the year. Hopefully, it's not Corona. <laughs> no, it's just a cold. Um, and next week, we have the harvest moon, one of the best full moons of the year. I'm a little bit unsure what to do, but I'm going to give myself a couple of options. I'm definitely gonna bait this spot heavily, this area, should I say, it's not exactly a spot. Um, gonna give it a few kilos of tigers spread about, you know, so they've gotta keep rooting around for them for a long time. And a few kilos of boilies. I think I've got a couple of tubs of the old um, mainline hemp and crushed nuts, so a bit of everything out there. Just lots of uh, bits and bobs so that they keep revisiting the area. Um, there's a lot of carp in here and I think you know when they come on you they can clear you out quite easily so the more bits and pieces you've got there or the more spread out the bait is then obviously that's going to hopefully keep them in the zone for longer. Um, yeah I've got the old meadow buzz at the moment I think there's definitely a good chance there could be 40s in here that sh you know haven't been caught yet or there's it's done a couple of 39s that could go 40. Um, I've seen a couple of real special ones in here in the stake pit earlier on in the year um, so yeah lots and lots of good ones to go at but I've also invested a lot of time in Longreach so far and that friendly common 
could come out any time and maybe the old harvest moon is the one for that. So I think I'm going to shoot over there before I head home and stick a little bit of bait in. That spot that I didn't fish or the swim that I didn't fish out of stubbornness a couple of weeks ago, you know, I, I had two sessions where I had five fish out of there, or five fish in two sessions. Um, I think that's a good zone, so yeah, I'll give that a little prep up. And if I come back on Tuesday, then I'll have two options to drop onto. I think it's going to be hard to not go on the meadow at the moment because, yeah, it's trawling season, isn't it? <laughs> Happy days, enjoying it. Like I say, because they're all so fresh and new and, you know, they haven't been caught much. They're just absolute perlers and so many different ones to go at. So, yeah, I'm enjoying it, loving it. Happy days. Anyway, we've still got time for another bite before I leave. I'm going to give it another few hours. Yeah, yeehaw, come on, car. Right, an angling red letter day. There are a few that I can think of, but one that I was just sort of dwelling on thinking about just, just a little while ago was over on Nazy Meads on the South Lagoon, quite a few years back now, sort of 20, 20 plus years ago, we used to all get over there at the start of the season, which was the traditional season then. The fish had already spawned, and this was a few weeks later. And uh, I was fishing in this swim where there was two islands joined together by a bar that was only sort of shallow on the surface and all the weed was coming up off the bar and the fish were evident you could see the fish all and around over and over and on the bar and um, I can remember I was fishing something that not really gets done much today we was fishing pop-ups off the lead on braided hook links it was never nylon it was always braided hook links just as you would do normally but instead of putting a bottom bait on we put a pop-up on and sometimes they were like an oily fish mill, perhaps with a cork ball oily fish mill. That's what I used to use most of the time. And uh, I can remember just sort of casting them onto the, um, onto the top of the bar and fishing six, eight, ten inch pop-ups in amongst the little bits of weed. And at night it'd all be flat calm and you could see bits of weed just touching the surface and then the water would shimmer where a fish is, is sort of upended and having a feed up and that. Then all of a sudden you get an almighty eruption and a one-toner and it would be screaming off out to the middle of the lake. We caught loads of fish like that on pop-ups off the lead and it's probably something I've not done since really and we often wonder like are we getting too good for our own boots really and why don't we use these methods that caught us loads of fish years ago. Something I'm going to think about doing again, I'm, I'm definitely going to have a go at that. But yeah, just something I forgot about really, fishing pop-ups off the lead and I think I had 10 or 11 fish that session, one of them being the smoke tam junkie, which later on went to be a big 40. Um, a few other nice fish. Yeah, it was a good old session, eh? a proper red letter day. So hindsight of life, um, fishing wise, um, talking to my younger self, um, as I've been doing this for probably about 30 odd years now, kind of grew up in parts of the country where there were hardly any carp, to be honest, yet alone big carp. I uh, grew up in South Wales um, and then spent a number of years living in the West Country and they just don't exist, uh, apart from in a couple of lakes. Um, but I'd probably say back, back in those days, I was probably obsessed with thinking that in order to be successful, everything was just about bait, and, bait rigs and that was it. So everything had to be about the best bait possible, the best rig possible, and really paying naively and probably quite stupidly, paying very little attention to watercraft. So a lesson to my younger self would actually be forget the bait and the rigs part. You need, you need a good, strong, efficient rig with a pin sharp hook and you need a bait they're going to eat, but you've just got to put it where they are. I know it's obvious, absolutely obvious to anybody probably watching it, but kind of when you're that age and running around and all excited and stuff like that, you don't think about those things a lot of the time. Um, so yeah, so that would be the lesson for my younger self fishing wise, uh, would actually just be to learn the water, watch the fish and just look and look and look and look and look and actually spend more time on watercraft and location than anything else at all. Um, as without that, you are literally screwed. You might as well chuck them up the bank behind you, which is probably what I spent the best part of 10 years doing. Um, so I think that's probably from a fishing point of view. Um, from a personal point of view, I think it's hard to look back on the last 12 months um, and not actually reflect on that um, and kind of what everyone's been through, I suppose, as, as people, as a country, as a, as, as a society. Um, 
and when you look at the tremendous loss of life and the way so many people have struggled in the past 12 months, um, I think it's just to, to not take life for granted. Um, you know, it is genuinely too short. Um, we're, we're lucky um, as carp anglers, you know, we get to come places like this and we get to spend a lot of our time outside, which is brilliant for us, our, our physical health, our mental health and everything else. So in that respect, we're blessed. Um, but it, it really is, I suppose, that lesson that, you know, life is short and life is very, very, very precious. Um, and if you want to go and do something, then uh, make sure you go and do it while you can, because uh, those times won't be there forever. Well, I don't know about you, but I absolutely love this time of year. Blossom on the trees, yellow flowers everywhere, warm, comfortable temperatures, but more importantly, the carp are feeding. The next couple of weeks is what we refer to as Duffer's Fortnight. There's going to be loads of big carp caught all over the country. So best of luck if you are out there having a go yourselves. Don't forget, if you enjoyed the show, you can support us via PayPal. Just a small contribution is all we ask for if you'd like to see more of Carp Angle on YouTube. But also, please subscribe. And if you could give it a thumbs up, that'd be brilliant. If you want to leave comments, fantastic. But all of those things help us within YouTube and help more people to see it. Thank you very much. See you next time.